Right. I had my world history one earlier today, and I forgot to record the first like five minutes of that. And bummer for those guys. Um, <coughs> okay. So, uh, if I could ask you guys to mute your mics, world history did not, and that got kind of annoying once I got into things. Um, if you have any questions or any, any comments, uh, there's a chat on here, so click on that um, and use, use that. Um, I don't know why hers is up here. Um, yes, Faith points out that I shaved. I shaved on Monday, like last Monday. Um, and so I, I always said I'd shave once I knew I wasn't going to see anybody for a while. And then that afternoon they decided we were going to do zoom meetings, but it was too late. Actually, I ca I had a mustache for about three days and it looked ridiculous. So I'd like forget that I had it and I'd walk in the bathroom and I'd see myself in the mirror and I just burst out laughing. That was always a good wake up. But yeah, so I got rid of it, it's starting to come back a little bit. I'm gonna grow it back out, but it was good. I needed to uh, exfoliate the skin a little bit. Um, so this is uh, quite an adjustment. It's uh, a strange situation we find ourselves in. Um, and I know it's not perfect for some. Some, some of you guys might really like the fact that you were uh, possibly getting to sleep in or you're not having to put as much like classroom time. Uh, some might be bothered by the fact you don't actually get face-to-face -face contact with each other. I understand that. That's uh, that's been unfortunate for all of us, um, <coughs> but you know we're dealt <clears throat> we're dealt the hand that we have, uh, so we might as well play it as it is. So I still have a job to do, regardless. My job is to teach you guys. You guys have a job to do uh, in order to learn. So. It's going to be different, but I'm still going to try and do everything I can. Um, I've always said history is about is not about the events that take place, but how society responds to them. So, uh, you know, take this as an opportunity to continue to learn uh, and to get better. Don't use it as a crutch, as a reason not to uh, not to learn. So we're just we're going to test some things out. This is not a perfect solution. There's going to be some issues, but I, I I'm <clears throat> I'm willing to work with that. Um, I understand every situation is different. You guys have other classes. You guys have probably responsibilities at home, whether you're working or maybe you're taking care of siblings while parents work. I understand the uh, the trials that come with this. So <coughs> uh, I will try and be as flexible as possible and, and try and work with you guys uh, when it's needed. Uh, you guys can reach out to me at any time. You guys can email me anytime. I, I'm pretty good about being around my email and being able to respond uh, in a quick fashion, especially now with all this free time. So uh, any questions, please reach out and I'll do my best to work with you. How this is gonna work is I will lecture all five days, just like, Normal. Not much is going to change in that regard. Uh, these Zoom meetings, Mondays and Thursdays, they are not 100% mandatory. 
Um, if you can make them, I recommend you make them. If you have any questions or if there's anything we need to discuss or your input is needed on anything, uh, it'll benefit you to be here. I am recording this so that way I can upload it to Classroom and you guys can access it later or if the people that miss, they can, they can still watch it. So, uh, I, I will upload on Tuesdays, Wednesdays, and Fridays, I will upload uh, the lectures on Classroom. I'll try and have them up by nine or 10 every morning. You can watch them. Um, Mondays and Thursdays will be kind of wrap sessions like this, and then I'll lecture a little bit at the end. Uh, and I will still upload that. So you will have access to all the notes and everything. And you can go back and watch as many times as you need to, or slow it down, or pause it, whatever uh, is needed. So I, this isn't a huge change as far as history. I understand your other classes are probably gonna be a little more dramatic and probably have uh, more turnover and more trial and error. And so that's probably going to be a, uh, a little more stressful. So I'm gonna try and keep this as relatively stress-free as possible. And you can reach out any time, like I said, but uh, since I, lecture anyways this whole recording lectures and uh you guys taking notes it, it shouldn't be a big issue and i'm sure i'm doing that so that way you know hopefully you guys don't get overwhelmed and uh, all that so i i'm hoping that this will be one class that won't hopefully stress you out too much um with that said still going to teach um you can still take notes as normal, uh, if you handwrite notes, great. If you type your notes, I recommend uh, watching the lectures on obviously a different device, whether you watch them on your phone and then type them on your computer or you watch them on your computer and type them on your phone or iPad, I don't care either way. It's just easier because the notes will be on the screen. This will basically be my slides with my voiceover. So it should be relatively simple. And you know, you can, and, and we'll have a test still since I was already moving all my tests online. We'll still have a test at the end of the chapter. It'll be the normal online version, it'll be open note. Um, so, you know, business as usual in that regard. Uh, let's see. I have office, hours, like all teachers are going to have office hours. Mine are uh what is it like 11 to noon and five to six but again i'll be around you know my notes and stuff basically all day so you can you can really reach out and email me at any time and i'll i'll probably be able to uh get back to you at a decent time um so the way i'm going to track attendance because that's the big thing Grades are kind of uh, a minor thing now. Uh, as far as attendance and tracking learning, I am at the end of every lecture, <clears throat> I will have what is known as an essential question, kind of like an exit ticket question. And it'll be on the screen and it'll be every day with the notes. And it'll be something regarding the notes that day, something you learned. Um, Actually, I forgot to do it before the meeting. After this meeting, I will post an assignment on Classroom. And it will say week uh, 3-30, essential questions. And you will click on that assignment and you will click create Google Doc. In that Google Doc, you will type out each day the question and your answer. And for that week, you will put all five questions and answers on that Google Doc. And that will be due at Friday evening at 6 p.m. <clears throat> so uh, at the end of every week, you should have five questions, and five answers, one per day on there. And I will take that. And if you got five questions and five right answers, 
then you were marked as present and you will get credit. That is the best way I know how to keep track of attendance. So that means that you can watch these at any time. You know, if you're busy during the day, or you're taking care of other classes, you can pull up this video, this video or any other pre-recorded lecture at any time, watch it and answer the question. As long as they all five are done by 6 p.m. on Friday. And I will reassign a new one every week. So I think that's the simplest way. And these won't be big questions. These will be short answers. Um, <coughs> and uh, I, I think a good idea to do is in your notes, whether they're handwritten or typed, to include these questions in your notes and uh, the answers along with them, because uh, these will probably be easy questions for me to put on the test. And the, and the questions themselves may not be directly from the underlying notes. They may be from things I said, and that's some, that is one advantage of this uh, virtual learning is that I can, I can put more stock into what I say and hold you guys more accountable to listening because now you can go back and hear it and you could soak it in a little better and you could slow it down. Uh, if you want to go through and write uh, on the first listen and then go back and just listen on the second time. But like uh, I, I may ask the essential question of something that I mentioned in detail and only had the bare bones up in the notes. So uh, be, be on the look for that because you know in the real world in the real world you are going to be asked to learn both verbally and visually and uh you know i'm, I'm gonna try and move us in that direction so um i will go no more than 30 minutes every day the lectures probably be around 20 minutes if that uh, you guys know, especially my sixth hour, you guys know as well as anybody that when we do question of the day, sometimes I don't get more than 20, 25 minutes of actual lecturing time. So this won't, this shouldn't actually really cut into my teaching that much. So, you know, it, we'll finish at least the civil rights chapter. And then hopefully we get the chance to get into the Cold War because that's where I'd like to end it. Um, let's see, I can't think of anything else off the top of my head. Um, again, any questions, please reach out. So <clears throat> here's what I'm going to do. Uh, I'm going to share my screen. Connor, please no Soviet flag backgrounds. Thank you. Um, you were just talking about the Cold War. I thought it'd be like, I thought I'd get into the spirit of it. Well, you're showing your allegiance now. I mean, I don't, I don't know, man. All right. Uh, let's go with this. So I was, I'm sharing my screen. Uh, if you guys want to get the notes out. Um, if I'm going too fast, remember, you can just go right back uh, to this video once I upload it. So I found out actually that uh, uploading the videos on Classroom, like just from a video file, can take quite a bit of room. Like if you have to, and I think you have to download the video, which that can be a pain, especially if I'm uploading five videos a week and they're all like 20 minutes long. So. What I decided is uh, I, I just put them on a YouTube channel and then I will post the link to the YouTube video on Classroom. So um, I will, yes, I have a ton of tabs, I know. Um, that'll be our system and it takes me about 20 minutes to upload all this. So expect about 20 minutes after this meeting for it to be uploaded online. I'll do that all five days of the week. So <clears throat> we're going to start with the civil rights movement and the struggle for 
equality. Let's see. So we're going to start with segregation. And, and before I forget, uh, as far as what you, I have underlined here, but that's kind of an old lecture. Since you guys are able to go back and stop and pause, I, I would recommend going ahead and writing everything. Um, you know, I j just to have the information, you know, when in doubt, write it out. That's what I would go with. So uh, don't get caught up so much in how much or what you need to write. Just if you have the ability, go ahead and just record all of it. What is segregation? As the definition of segregation is the separation of people according to race or ethnicity. Um, segregation can be, you know, whether it's separating African Americans from white people or Hispanics from white people or really any other um, non European ancestry from white people. And it comes in many different forms. We think of the most basic forms of segregation as, you know, different restaurants or water fountains or bathrooms, but they really come in all kinds of forms. We'll go over those um, as we move on. So before 1950, segregation was common really all over the place, all over the country. And segregation is a problem itself, obviously, in that it deprives rights. Um, you know, your right to use certain amenities or products just because of your skin color, something you have no control over. And that we know today is no bearing on what type of person you are uh, for decades and centuries. Uh, people have been discriminated, discriminated against because of it. And, and segregation is just a, another form of discrimination, you know, withholding the rights to certain things based on purely on uh, race or ethnicity. So <clears throat> I'm going to change the slide. Remember, you can go back and finish your notes if you need to. Uh, so there's two kinds of segregation. And people don't really know that. The, the main type that we're pretty well aware of is segregation by law, which is known as de jure segregation. And that was common in the South. Like the South was known as the place that struggled the most with race issues. And still to this day, it does. Uh, that's segregation by law. We'll talk in the next slide about Jim Crow laws. You know, a lot laws in the books that specifically hinder uh, people of certain ethnicities from, you know, daily life. Um, you know, uh, these included the laws on the books that uh, prohibited African Americans from attending uh, churches with white people or, you, or, you know, prohibited them from certain swimming pools or <clears throat> dining in at restaurants or even just marrying white people or uh you know having any kind of relationship with white people so these were strict laws and we see them today as being ridiculous and unnecessary but i uh, within the last 70 years they were on the books and they were uh followed or they were enforced pretty heavily. So that's the commonly known type of segregation is by law known as de jure segregation. The other type of segregation, which was just as common, but not as, not as much awareness to it was known as de facto segregation. And, and that is segregation that is done socially really without written laws. So it's known that the South was where a lot of racial struggle happened, but be aware that just as much racism took place in the North. People think that, you know, the North was the safe haven for African-Americans after the Civil War and everyone treated them nicely. No, they were just as 
uh, despised in the North. You know, there's, there, there are multiple reasons why slaves didn't necessarily run away to the North. Uh, some did, obviously, you've heard of the Underground Railroad, but I mean, people wonder why didn't all of them run to the North? Well, because in a lot of ways, uh, certain places in the North weren't much better. So keep that in mind that even in the 50s, there's still discrimination and segregation in places like New York City and Philadelphia and Boston, you know, places in the North. Uh, the most common ones were like housing. So a lot of neighborhoods, <clears throat> if they were previously uh, a lot of white middle class white people live there. They would not allow African Americans to live in their neighborhoods. Now, how can they do that without laws? Well, house uh, sellers would really jack up the price of a house if an African American was looking into it. Um, they would drive the value up, or they would just be obviously not welcome in that community. Uh, that, that's why we see today a lot of, especially inner cities, have certain ethnic pockets, as they're called, because that's where they were allowed to go. So segregation leads to uh, these communities that are naturally uh, homogenous. And when I say homogenous, I mean like everybody's the same ethnicity. You know, Harlem was a place where a lot of African Americans went because they, they were allowed there. There weren't many uh, white people there to discriminate the, against them or segregate them. Um, you know, New York City has certain pockets in it that a lot of uh, Hispanic people are a part of. Or, uh, you know, LA, Los Angeles has a lot of ethnic pockets in it where, you know, people kind of stick together. So that's a form of segregation without law, with, with no laws in the books, is uh, the housing discrimination, forcing them to live certain, not necessarily forcing them to live certain places, but not allowing them to live in certain places. <clears throat> so uh, life for African Americans in the South, the Jim Crow laws, were laws put on the books uh, to separate African Americans and, and uh, European ancestors or people of European ancestry. Um, those were all in the South. You know, laws that said they couldn't eat at certain restaurants, they couldn't swim in the pools. You know, those, the de jour segregation, the, those were Jim Crow laws. And those were around for over 100 years. Like those, those were in place as recent as the 60s. Uh, Plessy versus Ferguson was a landmark case, one of the biggest cases in American history, also one of our most shameful. They, the Supreme Court ruled that all facilities are to be made separate but equal, meaning that uh, things like restaurants and train cars, any kind of transportation, uh, African Americans had to be put in a separate quote but equal um, facility. Now, those often were not, or those were rarely equal. In fact, they're mostly run down, uh, and that's where the problem with this uh, lies. The background behind the case, if I can give that quickly, background behind the case is uh, Homer Plessy was a man of seven-eighths white and one-eighth African-American, meaning he had one grandparent that was African-American. So by looks, he looked white. He looked, you would probably have no idea uh, that he was African-American or he had African-American background. Uh, on a train car, he was, someone found it out and he was forced to sit in an African-American train car and he found that unacceptable. Took it to the Supreme Court. The Supreme Court ruled against him and created that separate but equal clause. Um, and this disenfranchises a lot of African-Americans where if you can vote and, uh, and ways that they did it in the South, there are grandfather clauses, an old rule that, or first of all, go over poll taxes. Poll taxes, they had to pay the tax to vote. Well, that tax would be really high for African Americans. Um, and so it would say, well, you can't vote since you can't afford it. Literacy tests were probably the most ridiculous. Uh, the county clerk or whoever was giving out 
uh, people's tickets to vote, they would give a literacy test. How smart are you? Are you smart enough to vote? And the person wanting to vote was completely at the mercy of the clerk behind the desk. It was all, almost always going to be white. Uh, and that person could tell them, okay, read the first line of this piece of scripture. And it'd be like four words. They would tell a white person, read that. And they maybe can't even read. But if they're white, the clerk would say, oh, uh, good enough. You can vote. And then they give uh, an African-American an impossibly difficult test. Impossible. I've taken one. Uh, if you, and I usually do, I would do this if we were in a normal classroom environment. I would... Uh, there is a copy online, if anyone after this wants to look at it, I think it's the Louisiana State uh, Literacy Test. It's from the 50s, I believe. It's 30 questions. You have, I think, 10 minutes to do it. And I, uh, in a normal classroom, I would offer, if anyone gets all, if anyone passes this test, they get uh, an automatic A for the semester. Now, I can't do that now because I can't ensure you took it. But uh, in order to pass the test, you have to get all 30 questions right. And all 30 of them are ridiculous questions. Like, I think I got about 20 of them right. And I really worked on it. It took more than, and if you don't, uh, according to the rules, if you don't do it in 10 minutes, you fail. So it definitely took me more than 10 minutes and just to get 20. Um, but yeah, if you wanted to Google it sometime, it's, I think it's Louisiana State Literacy Test. It's ridiculous. But it, uh, you know, it's something that they handed out to disenfranchise African Americans. Then to get around any of this, for white people, they adopted what was known as the grandfather clause. The grandfather clause is the rule that if your grandfather could vote, then so can you. That's what it means when we say grandfathered in. You know, if this rule is if your grandfather could vote, so could you. And so white people obviously they haven't been able to vote as long as their grandfathers were landowners back in the 1800s, early 1900s, well, African Americans, none of them, none of their grandparents could vote. So just another way to rob them of their, uh, their rights as a citizen. So now coming to the end, here's the essential question. What is an example of de jure segregation? And what is an example of de facto segregation? So I talked about that. I think I listed a couple. Um, so what you're going to do now is go to Google Classroom and under the assign, or I, I'm not at this moment, actually, because I forgot to do it beforehand. Here in about five minutes, uh, here in about five minutes, I will create an assignment that says essential week of 3-30 essential questions. And you will open it. There will be nothing there. You will click create Google Doc. And in it, you will just write out this question and then write out your answer. And then tomorrow when I upload the lecture, you will again open that same document and write out the question I ask at the end of that lecture and write out your answer. Uh, so that is it. I had to rush it there at the end because we're running out of time. Um, so let's see. Uh, oops, nope, don't want to do that. Um, Okay, uh, does everything work? Did, uh, are there any questions? Was that choppy? My internet here kind of sucks. So uh, I have no idea how I keep getting this notification that says internet connection is unstable. I'm sure it is. Um, but uh, I'm here for any questions you guys might have. Uh, please be patient with me. I'll be patient with you guys. Uh, again, I will be the assignment, those essential questions will be due Friday night at six o'clock. So you can do them day by day, or if you wanted to, you could wait till Friday to do them all. I wouldn't recommend that. That's a lot of just sitting there lecture, listening to me lecture. Uh, but they will be, I will collect at six o'clock and that'll be your attendance. And I, cause at the end of every week, we're supposed to email uh, the administration, tell them who was president, who did the work, who's learning. And that's how I'm going to check. That's how I'm going to know. So if you fill those out, you'll be good to go. Uh, <clears throat> so I, I, I'm not sure if we're going to be able to do a question today, guys. I'm sorry. I've got to get this material out. Uh, I've got to, I've got to try and fill the standards as much as I can. Uh, you know, I still have a job to do. I still, and getting paid to do it, so I'm going to do it. Um, 
I mean, you guys can, heck, I don't know. If you guys get here early enough, someone can put a question today in the group chat and you guys just type it out. And then when I start my lecture, you guys will be good. Maybe just, maybe we'll just have to do that on the Zoom meetings. Uh, again, these are not mandatory, but I recommend if you have the ability to show up, uh, you make the time to do so. It'll be very beneficial. Um, if that's it, I will uh, let you guys go. Let me know if you have any questions or issues or need some help. I'm more than happy to. Uh, take care, guys, and stay safe.